It looks like The Rock has some major backstage heat with talent from WWE. What's going on? Why does The Rock have this heat? And what does it have to do with some of the promos that he's been cutting on the likes of Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins as of late? Also going to be giving an update on AEW ticket sales. Are they up? Are they down? Are they just kind of what they are? We're going to tell you everything we know and so much more in this video. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Okay, so obviously Dwayne The Rock Johnson has made his return. He's back. He's been cutting promos. He just had a rock concert this past week on SmackDown that people were raving about. And one of the things that was mentioned and that people have been talking about in the promos that The Rock has been cutting, both in that rock concert and also on Twitter, is the fact that The Rock has been cursing a lot quite a bit getting away with saying the f word dropping s bombs all every curse word under the book the rock has said basically up until this point well we're now learning this courtesy of sc scoops that this apparently has rubbed talent the wrong way backstage so here is part of the report from sc scoops quote I was told that The Rock's viral promos, where he keeps cursing, including opening up his social media promo this week with, are you effing kidding me, about Cody Rhodes, has rubbed some people the wrong way. There seems to be a feeling that we are seeing a double standard. Because we're talking about Dwayne Johnson here, it seems that The Rock is able to get away with dropping every flowery profanity he wants to on social media while the rest of the roster are wearing PG handcuffs. I was additionally told that talent are asking why The Rock is getting a pass. I went on to say, I was told that the thinking is that, quote, even if he is a big movie star, he shouldn't, shouldn't everyone be playing by the same rules so he can curse he can use that to get over but everyone else is handcuffed and that was a quote from a source apparently as he scoops talked to the report also outlined something that kind of adds to this a little bit and I, I think adds to the frustration of some WWE talent who may be frustrated with not the rock directly but in a way indirectly here's the quote I'm told that Nick Khan, Paul Levesque, and Dan Ventrell, who I assume is a WWE executive, sent out a memo the other week about how talent need to adhere to PG guidelines on TV and also on social media. The Rock, like most things in his life at this point, is getting a bit of some special treatment. Again, that is courtesy of SC Scoops. Wonderful reporting there. Um, obviously... There's a lot to get into here. Uh, WWE went PG a few years ago, and uh, more than a few years ago at this point. But ever since then, there have been, you know, kind of handcuffs put on talent. They have not been allowed to curse freely, although we've seen it a little bit more and more prevalent uh, over the past number of years, I think. And a lot of people expected when this merger with UFC and TKO happened that we would kind of not return to the attitude era necessarily or even the ruthless aggression era as far as the frequency with which people were cursing or using profanity, but we would get a little bit more gritty as far as the language goes and the presentation goes. Now, the presentation has definitely gone that way. However, the language has been something else. Obviously, we've seen The Rock do it, but we have not seen, you know, talent do it as much as I think we were expecting because remember... TKO owns both WWE and UFC. And while it's unexpected to hear, you know, profanity lace promos anytime soon on USA Network or Netflix even, the fact that they can't do it on social media is a bit of, a, I don't know. To me, that, that, that just seems not out of pocket, but it just doesn't seem right. It's a way to get over. It's outside of the constraints of your television show. I, I understand if WWE wants to keep up this perception that they're a family-friendly show. However, at the same time, you are now merged with a company in the UFC that you're cross-promoting with that says some horrific stuff that I definitely wouldn't want some children to hear uh, outside of just the cursing. But so, so again, it, it's a bit of an internal double standard, too, because UFC, obviously, like they are a, a massive cash cow for TKO. They're not going to make them stop cursing. That's why a lot of their audience is there, right? Because it's gritty. It's real. But that's not to say WWE couldn't incorporate a little bit more of that. But getting to The Rock and, and specifically The Rock and his promos, 
Is it a bit of a double standard? Absolutely. It's not even a bit. It is a double standard. It is right there, plain there for everyone to see. And the unfortunate thing about it is there's not much that can be done. The Rock is the biggest star, box office star, I should say, in Hollywood. He is the biggest box office star in WWE history. He is, at this point, a made guy. He is untouchable. So, as we saw on SmackDown, if The Rock wants to go out there on network television and curse up a storm, he can do it. The Rock wants to go on Twitter and curse up a storm, he can do it. It is not fair. It is not, uh, I'm not going to use the term just here because it's definitely not the correct term to use, but it's not fair. And that's unfortunately it. WWE knows that, you know, or The Rock knows that he can do things that other talent can't. And I don't think it's a fault of The Rock, honestly. Like, The Rock is just doing what he's always done. Like, he is one, he's on the board of directors for WWE, sorry, or excuse me, TKO. He's on the board of directors for TKO. He has clout within the company. He's always had these, you know, insanely profanely laced promos. So he's just doing what he's doing. The issue really is that WWE is allowing him to do it, but no one else. And you could make an argument that talent could actually benefit from that. There are talent who could benefit from doing that, even just on social media. Like, even if they're just out there on social media and they're more realistic, take, for example, the Austin Theory uh, th thing that he did when that reporter confronted him in Australia and he started cursing up a storm there. And we all know that, that was pre-planned. We all know that was fake. But even that, it broke through and people were talking about it. And that is something that helped Austin Theory that week be a little bit more prevalent in people's minds. And I'm not saying you have to be, everyone has to curse up a storm, but like, I think talent like should have that to use in their arsenal. Like not every single video, promo, whatever needs to be profanity laced. However, in the realistic presentation and in the world we live in today, that type of thing can really help get people over. And you can make the argument for sure, and it's a good one, that people don't necessarily need that to get over, and they shouldn't necessarily need that to get over, and you'd be right. At the same time, I think that there are talent who could benefit from it. Again, I'm not trying to put too much emphasis or importance on the idea of being able to curse. You can get over without cursing, obviously, but I, I do think, you know, Given WWE and the way that they've been presented over the past number of years and and just, you know, the, the restrictions that have been put on talent, like, obviously, there's going to be some, you know, hesitation or, or some heat there with talent who can't do that and who know that it's a special thing to the fans. Like, fans see that as special because it happens so infrequently. So that's it on The Rock. We'll obviously keep you up to date on that story. However... We're now going to be moving on to some All Elite Wrestling news. Uh-oh, there we go. Uh, we're doing it live. All Elite Wrestling news. AEW is selling some tickets at some decent rates. So, obviously, one of the big conversations that people have been talking about online is AEW and their inability, in a lot of ways, to sell out stadiums or sell out arenas, I should say. Obviously, like a few weeks ago, they ran an arena in Atlanta in the uh, suburbs, I should say, of Atlanta, Georgia. They got about like 2,500, I believe it was, according to WrestleTix, tickets sold at the time of the event. That is not great. However, it's something we've seen. They're selling for TV, like right around, they're averaging 3,000, I believe, over the past number of months. It's That's not a great number. They ran the TD Garden. I was there live, and they had about 9,000 people in attendance there. So that was a big house, and they were all there for Mercedes. And the question was, how is this going to translate in the future? Are people going to show up for future shows? Because now you have Okada, you have Mercedes, you have Osprey, you have Brian, you have uh, Samoa Joe, Swerve likely getting a shot at the world title at the next pay-per-view. Well, we now know that AEW Dynamite this coming week in Toronto at the Coca-Cola Center is... Selling pretty good uh, compared to at least some previous Dynamites. They have sold at this point 5,684 tickets according to WrestleTix. And, you know, the expectation there, like, with walk-ups and everything, they should get or at least around that that 6,000 number, which for Dynamite is a really good number. 
granted, it's a very stacked show. You have Copeland, Christian three. You have Okada versus Kingston for the title. You have Mercedes on the card. Like they, they are stacking this show, and I think that it's part of the strategy. Like part of what made AEW, like part of what made AEW so successful with selling tickets early on was the one the curiosity factor that people had with this new brand, this alternative that was, you know, giving them something WWE wasn't. However, as we kind of move forward now, like the reality is that WWE ha as a product has improved drastically from where it was in 2020 and 2021. Vince McMahon is no longer there. Triple H is booking and, and making logical sense with his booking. So to fans who were looking for something different, AEW is less special now. And I think that's Part of the reason why they're having trouble selling tickets, the other part obviously is the fact that they, you know, are not marketing as well as they have in the past. I think that's going to improve over the next few months now as they kind of grow and and, and scale up. But it, it, it so far is trending good. I mean, if you look at like some of their advances, like for example, they have a show coming up in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Nothing obviously announced. It's on May 1st. And they've sold uh, nearly 3,000 tickets, 2,925, if for uh, a Dynamite taping that's over a month away. So that's a really good advance. And then obviously they had the pay-per-view coming up in St. Louis. It's a smaller arena. It's about 7,000 to 8,000 seats on a good day. 5,000 tickets distributed so far. There's current capacities for 6,000. I say they'll get to at least 7,000 or somewhere around there by the time the pay-per-view comes. So they're doing a better job. I think we just need to see that more consistent uh, 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 mode. And like the other thing that's kind of not helping them is the fact that, you know, they're not having people travel for their shows. A lot of what a lot of people would travel for AEW in the beginning because it was kind of like a special thing. Now, like, the money's ran out. <laughs> it's not as special, and like you have two shows a week. So interesting stuff going on in pro wrestling. Uh, I think AEW is going to be just fine. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about these AEW advances, about The Rock getting backstage heat. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Also, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell.